Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and we have some terrible news. We're here in a fire situation. Uh, the fire has already happened, as you can see, and it's done some terrible damage to this person's house. Uh, we got called out late last night by the energy supplier to ask us to check and see if we could do an investigation as to what the source of the fire might be because there was some concerns that it might be from the meter. But um, we're gonna show you what we found and you'll see that it wasn't from the meter, it was from something else. Our job here today is basically to tidy all this up, try and cut out all the burnt cabling and make it, well, hopefully restore power, but it's a bit of a tricky one because there is quite extensive damage. So I'll flip the camera around and show you what's what. If you enjoy videos like this, hit a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and let's go. So here we are. Corey was the brave hero who came out last night um, to investigate. Okay, so I've just arrived here um, at the site of the fire. So it's actually really quite severe. Um, thankfully for the customer, I mean, it's quite a miracle. Um, the main fuse is blown. It was only a 60 amp, um, I think 1361 fuse um missed all the gas pipes and everything um so you've got the boiler just literally here but i mean it is absolutely cooked um and basically we've just been called in to try and ascertain where the fire has started i think it started inside that board i mean that board looks smoked um you can see it's completely spread throughout the room um, quite severely it's melted all of that it's melted the magna filter um, I think we'll probably start by getting the cover off of that board um, we'll take some pictures then we'll take the cover off and see what we can find I mean it could have even started inside this little board here so it looks like a little shower unit in fact it's very likely that it started in that shower unit but we're going to have to pull it apart really to, to be able to tell for certain. Jeez. Wow. Alright, so my phone died annoyingly. So I'm going to change over to this camera here. Not sure if the audio is slightly different. But basically, um, the reason the customer wanted me, if possible, to come out, diagnose it, and put it right tonight um, and get the power back on. But I don't think that's going to happen. Um, for a start, the main fuse is blown, so I'll have to get another BS88 fuse. Um, and also, I don't know how far the damage from that smoke's gone. Because I, I don't know whether or not it was a manufacturing fault inside this, or if it was a loose connection, or something like that, inside that consumer unit that's actually caused the issue. Um, I mean, you can see it's melted around there, but I'm not going to start taking it apart tonight. I'm going to get some gloves and a mask on tomorrow. I've got my COVID mask, but I haven't got a proper rated mask for all of this melted plastic rubbish. Very, very lucky customer. I think tomorrow morning, probably get Jordan down here as well, or at least Oscar with me, and we'll continue the adventure then and see, um, see what it's saying. Because the smoke damage is through here on the ceiling, you can see where it's come out of all of the vents. I don't know if that smoke damage has heated up and damaged the cables. Um, so for that reason, I'm not happy to reconnect any circuits until I've had the cable ferret up there properly, scoping all of the cables out. So from the strange looking uh, Romanian Noah and his ark, have a good night. This is the incoming supply, which was, which had boxing around it. Yeah, like Corey says, it had boxing around it. So it's in fairly good condition, fortunately. Um, the situation did actually blow the main fuse. So this is the main 60 amp cutout fuse, which the electricity supplier has actually removed from there. And they've just left that so that that's blank. There's nothing in there. This is the cover <coughs> which which went around the uh, meter. That and was the monitor for the smart meter. 
yeah so <laughs> you can just see some kind of electronic chips in there there we go that is a melted smart meter circuit board um, you know the little plug-in monitoring device part of the smart meter obviously that is the actual smart meter this was up here like that but the fire okay, pulled it down yeah so it was like a blowtorch they said they said that the top of that they said this isn't the fire damage really they said although this room was on fire this room wasn't the fire damaged room um they said it was like a blowtorch up so it's torched the wood up there it's torched this it's melted a lot of things and all of this is just from where the plastic melted down um and the actual mod of the extent of the fire this would sort of be above the ceilings and out in these areas where the smoke has traveled through yeah so if we go for a little close-up obviously what's happened you can deduct and let me know in the comments what you think but we are sort of 99% sure that basically this little shower unit here has been the source of the fire. It just like, it's pretty obvious from the state of it. And shower units are susceptible to this because obviously you've got a lot of power going through. Uh, we've got a Volex, so it's a Volex unit, 63 amp, 30 milliamp RCD, and then a, um, an MCB, which is a 50 amp. There we go, B, uh, VB50. It looks like it's got a six mil coming out of it. So that is, uh, might be 10, mm, I don't know. But it's literally melted right through the copper uh, cable there. Okay, so we, yeah, so basically, here we go. What we've got is coming into the top of this RCD, we've got what looks to me like six mil cable. Um, so we've got six mil coming in and six mil going out, which 50 amp, that's not great. Right, so the plumber's just been in because obviously the gas meter and um, the boiler are in here. So he's just been doing some checks on those. They do appear to be okay. It's just a case of lots of soot basically. So they're quite lucky with that. Um, but back to this, I've just looked and it is a 10 mil twin and earth going out. So 50 amp breaker is okay for that. It looks like what they've done is they fed it with a 10 mil from the consumer unit. I guess that they've come directly off the buzz bar in the consumer unit. We'll take the cover off that in a minute, but you can see that twin and earth here coming through from the consumer unit and then going into the top of this RCD. Then there's another uh, 10 mil coming out of the top of the breaker and it looped over, the copper's actually burnt through. So that could well be the issue actually, because it almost looks like it's melted through rather than burned i all of this copper would be yeah i reckon there's a little weakness in that copper wire actually looking at that because that snapped through so it could be that they either when they installed it they bent it too sharply and it's created a weakness in the copper no, or um hold on a sec so then it goes down into this trunking to this isolator that is the shower isolator then from the shower isolator it comes back up the trunking and goes just straight through the back of this enclosure up and out into the ceiling and that's the shower cable so it's a kind of a weird setup that they've done this shower isolator locally rather than in the bathroom but it's, it's not necessarily wrong but i think that this copper is is where it's been arcing that is what's caused the fire because the fact that it's snapped through like that um we'll see if we can see the new the neutral that's the neutral block and again this okay then there's a flexible kind of stranded cable coming off there um, the incoming cable actually looks okay it's the outgoing one that, that is burnt but we'll start stripping this out and we'll see what we find and we'll have a look in the consumer unit as well and see what we find there and maybe we'll cut this out and send it to Big Clive. Right, so um, looking at this, what we've discovered 
is that this wire here, the live incoming into the RCD, is actually loose. And it, yeah, see that? It's loose. The neutral is tight in the terminal. That's the neutral. This is the live. The live is loose. And if we put a screwdriver on it, it's actually loose enough that you can just tighten the screw. So that looks like the problem. It's actually, it was a loose connection on the incoming live conductor. The outgoing live is tight. The buzz bar, can you check the terminals on the buzz bar, Corey, see? Bus bar, bus bar terminals are tight. Yeah, they're good. So it's not that, um, but yeah, serious meltage has happened there. And it looks like that's probably the cause was just the incoming that could have blown live that cable. cable. They melted down to bare copper and then that touched it or the heat melted that, that would have blown that cable. And then it would have just blown it to pieces before the main fuse blew. Possibly. Uh, although that's the live and that's the live. So if the two lives touch together, that wouldn't, that wouldn't blow. But it looks like the live incoming has shorted out to the neutral. And that's probably what blew the main fuse because you can see there's a, a quite a, a blow in there. Um, it, it, might have, it might have blown on the neutral actually if you look, because I think that was tucked behind there. So that, probably that melted like that, blew against the neutral here. And then that's, yeah, that's why the RCD is tripped as well maybe. Oh, nice yeah, it will, it will reset. <laughs> MCB didn't go though, which, uh, I'm sure it was more than 50 amps fault current, but it was probably so melted by the time it shorted out there that it wouldn't function properly anyway. So, so, we could get parts out of that, boiler control. so that is the boiler controller. <laughs> the buttons still yeah, nice. <laughs> button still works, nice. I don't think so. So we're going to replace all this. Uh, we've got a rubbish bag here, which Oscar is looking after what we might do is put this in a separate rubbish bag and get big clive to do a tear down on this particular um offending article so we'll put that separate down here for the moment we'll get the consumer unit cover off next and see if there's anything suspicious there corey's taking all this stuff out obviously we're going to have to put in a new shower isolator and a new boiler spur and just redo the tails as well, yeah, but what? Yeah, I don't think an earth leakage <laughs> test is necessary at the moment. Uh, <laughs> but um, we're going to probably move the consumer unit down to a reasonable height here, and we're going to have to extend all the cables down anyway. So we might as well put the consumer unit at a sensible height rather than the stupidly high location where it is at the moment going to cut out the ceiling, cut out a load of the plasterboard and then we can um, just check all the cables that are outgoing to make sure that there's no heat damage within the cables because obviously the heat can spread up the copper wires and go go quite deep into the cables in the ceiling so we need to check all of that as well. Yeah. Right so consumer unit cover is off. Um, as you can see the, if I get the light here, this is the cable that they took to go to feed into the shower consumer unit. They've just sort of jumped off the back of the, the main switch, the, the incoming tails there. Not ideal, but it doesn't look like there's been any overheating on this side at all. Definitely seems like the overheating was happening in the shower board. And actually everything else in here looks fairly decent so it looks like yeah everything looks pretty decent really we've got one set of tails coming into the bottom of that which goes in the top there loops across and then you've got the neutral tail um, within the consumer unit comes through and along into this RCD. So you've got sort of two sets of tails. These all look fine, they're just a little bit sooty, but obviously the tops of the cables where they come out of the consumer unit, that's where the damage is. So we're gonna just get this off the wall now, 
try and label up as much as we can based on what we can see going out of the breakers uh, so that when we cut these cables we can write on them in Sharpie or just label them up as much as possible and we know what's what. Otherwise we're going to have to test every single circuit one by one to find out what it's doing. But um, yeah, interesting little job. Corey's just stripping out down here and um, he's managed to get most of that stuff out of the way. Nice, my hands. nice, nice mucky hands. So yeah, going to crack on. Right, so we have stripped everything out. So the consumer unit up here is now gone. I've opened the ceiling up a bit. Unfortunately, the cables look like they're in fairly good condition. You can usually tell by how flexible they are, whether they've had heat damage, and these are really nice and flexible still. So what we'll do is we'll just um, strip them back one by one, do an insulation test on each one just to check, and then if it's okay, we'll extend it with a junction box. We'll put a Wargo box for each one up in the ceiling, and then we're gonna put a 100 by 100 trunking down here and run it and put a new consumer unit down on the wall at a nice reasonable height, new tails from the main cutout, and then once everything's safe, uh, we can call UK Power Networks or, or the supplier, I'm not sure who yet, and get them to just pop a new fuse in there. We'll redo these bonding connections, um, just put new cable because they're such short runs. That's for the water, and that's for the gas over there, so that's easy to just pull in new cables on the old ones. And we've got about 10 circuits maybe, so you've got Obviously, the sh uh, you've got the cooker, you've got the shower here, then you've got the um, ground floor lights. There's a spur that was off the ring, but we'll put that on its own radial. I'm not sure what that does yet. First floor lights, garage supply, which is in an armoured, and then we've got ground floor ring circuit, um, and then there is a bell which needs to be re redone at some point as well. So, all in all. Needs a bit of a clean, obviously, so the big wipes are coming out, but we should be able to hopefully get them with power back. Maybe not tonight, but hopefully in the next few days. So, should be all good. So I am heading home now because I've got a load of office work to do, but Corey and Oscar are gonna carry on here and just smash this out. As always, if you enjoy our videos, hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And we'll see you on the next one.